The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Fear. So many choices. Oh, we no function fear well without. Woohoo! Fear! Hello and welcome to another episode of Beer Busters, where we're going to bring you the news and reviews of some wonderful brews. My name is Dan Baker, as always, joined by my co-host and brewologist, Steph Hefner, and our from entertainer, Wayne Baker. Now, today, something I'm very excited for, and this is a first in Beer Busters podcast history. We, we ran have, out of headphones. We ran out of headphones. <laughs> we ran out of microphones. We have a full, crowded, to the brim pool table that we're recording on so if everyone at the table wouldn't mind going through your names and introducing yourselves to our wonderful listeners we have with us um paul miller i'm the marketing director of hopheads gear uh my name is bartley kaminsky i am the founder and president of hopheads official gear also creative director <laughs> i'm kevin keller i kind of help out occasionally <laughs> all right i'm wayne, wayne baker oh we already yeah i was gonna say sorry. wayne we're gonna skip over you and then we have i'm mallory hale um <laughs> I'm just here. Beer fan. She's some random person. Yes. <laughs> and uh, she's my fiance, by the way. Yay. I'm D- Dean Pierce of Pierce Brewing Company. All Returning right. to the Beer yes. Busters podcast. The basically. triumphant return of That's Dean right. Pierce from Pierce Brewing Company, which uh, I'm very excited that uh, that you have some goodies with you. And the guys from Hopheads were kind enough to bring some goodies with. So we've got, not only do we have a full table of people, we have a full table of beer also. Isn't that what it's all about? That's right. exactly what it is all about. So I'm going to stop rambling so we can start this show and get drinking. Oh, we have a sipping beer. Steph, what do we have as a sipping beer? Oh, you're We're already you drinking. That's right. That's right. <laughs> How could I forget that I'm drinking? <laughs> so I recently visited uh, a new-ish brewery in Hatbury, Hatboro, Pennsylvania, Crooked Eye Brewery. Um, you can check out my full article on beerbusterspodcast.com. This is Austin's Pumpkin Porter, which was one of my favorite that I sampled while I was there uh, interviewing uh, one of the owners, Paul, who's uh, the father of the head brewer, Jeff, there. Um, I love this beer because the the pumpkin spice is very subtle and it's all about the creaminess and it's all about the roastiness of the porter, which which I really loved. And um, right now they're just a tasting room, uh, giving away samples and filling growlers. They will sell pints by the new year and they are expanding their space already, even though they've only been open uh, a short time. But they are going to be adding a pub that will specialize in smoked barbecue. Oh, thank God. Feature uh, raw nights. They're looking to get into like sushi and oysters every now and then, something a little classy. Uh, so they're expanding their bar. They're adding a pub. They have some stuff in barrels already. So uh, very cool place, very cool people, and very tasty beer. So check them out if you're in the area. I do really like this beer, although I'll be honest, if you wouldn't have told me it was pumpkin, I wouldn't know that it's pumpkin. Yeah, it it's is very really subtle. subtle. Yeah. And you get it in the aftertaste. But um, mm. the, Would the, you say that it's a subtle hint of pumpkin? It's a subtle, it's a subtle hint, hint of pumpkin. Subtle hint of pumpkin. <laughs> it's, it's delicious. It is it's delicious. very good. It's pumpkinally delicious. We're starting smooth and roasty and by the end of the night we're going to be blowing our socks off with hops what was the first word you used there smooth thank you that is the perfect adjective for this beer quite honestly yeah it is so if i would have said that you wouldn't have actually made fun of me for once i never make fun of you oh right we've recorded evidence otherwise (laughs) anyway All right, we're going to keep it short because there's a lot going on today. So there is a list that was sent to us by a listener, Jacob Alquist, and I hope I am pronouncing your name right. If not, feel free to let me know, and I will correct it. Um, But we all know that I love lists because lists are good when there's no other news to report on. It was a lengthy list. It was from Men's Journal, which I have to yell at you, Men's Journal, because you have a hundred item list that is all a goddamn slideshow. So I had to transcribe it. I'm lazy. Cut me Got to get those clicks somehow. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I got to sell those ads. So anyway, so there's 100 items here. They ranked the 100 best beers in the world, according to them. Uh, so obviously, I'm not going to ramble through all 100 of them. But um, let's... Sorry, guys. We can't interview you. <laughs> yeah, right. We're just going to be listing these <laughs> An beers hour for the next later. hour. Uh, so how about this? Throw out a number. One to 100. 72. 72 is... Let me scroll down to it. Uh... J.W. Lee's Harvest Ale, which is a barley wine. 42. 42, good number. Uh, the brewery Saison Rue. Ooh, that's a great beer. Yeah. Ooh, Saison DuPont is number seven. That's what we had at uh, So I'm guessing Steph wants number seven. <laughs> well, I'm kind of going through. The, I'm giving uh, Men's Journal their clicks right now. I'm kind of going through. And yeah. and uh, our listener asked if we agree with the list. And uh, I have had many of these Take beers. but there's no, yeah, there's no I've way had. I've had all Let's go through uh, the, the top five. 
top five. See, I don't even know if they were in order because it starts at number one. It's not even like a countdown. But number one okay. on there was uh, Devil's Backbone Brewing, which is a uh, their German Schwarz beer. Okay. Mm. Uh, number two was Coast Brewing, German Kolsch. Three was, uh, it was Roquefort Brewery, which is Roquefort 8, their Belgian Dark Strong. Four was Deschutes, the Black Butte Porter, Butte Porter um, which I've had it. It's a good beer, and they are actually on the East Coast now, which is kind of good. Uh, number five was Green Flash Le Freak, Belgian IPA. And then going down towards uh, just another one that I saw that was good. Oh, I just lost it. Uh, number 63 was Ballast Point Sculpin IPA Yum! for Steph. 59 was Stone Brewing Enjoy By Series. Uh, Anchor Brewing Porter was number 53. Uh, Firestone Walker Wookie Jack was 57. It's a black IPA. Uh, Great Divide was number 68. The Yeti Imperial Stout. I like the name of that. Um, you know what I love? A lo- these beers are totally accessible. Um, a lot of these beers you can go to a local bottle shop and get. There's American beers, there's German beers. It kind of like all styles of beers. There's not a style that is is singled out. Um, it's a very accessible list of beers. Hey, Bourbon County. Speaking of, have yeah. you guys enjoyed that yet? Uh, it's sitting in the yes. back of my fridge until I can write you it. it. Of course, they drank wine. Yeah, <laughs> did, did you write? I gifted your... them bottles yeah. of Bourbon County. Does that not make me the best co-host ever? Yeah. Slash cousin. Yes. Seriously. Yeah, it, so I think I think some of the best beers I've ever had in my fridge have come from stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. I send them home with beer pretty much every time we record because I'm like, I have too much. You need to help me drink. There's it. no such thing as too much beer, but I'm happy to take any overflow. Absolutely. Uh, There's a lot of really good German beers on here. Wit beers and Schwartz beers. Yeah. <gasps> Schlangerla. Yeah, All right. There you go. What yeah, number? There you go. It's there. What number numbers? thirty. I don't think. I, I don't think, think these the numbers are, are, are relevant. I think it's just the number. It's of the just slides. a list. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was also, uh, they, of course, ranked Hetty Topper on the list. Uh, Lagunitas, Daytime IPA. They also, Lagunitas Sucks was on there. Oh, that's a good one. Um, Ooh, La Folle. Mm. Yes, there was that. Um, <laughs> Evil Twin Brewing Bikini yeah. Beer, Main Beer Company, M.O. We'll just link this. Sorry, yeah, exactly. people. You're going to have to click through 100, but. Yeah, yeah. Cantillon, sorry about that. Yeah. Just, just blame cream. men's health when you get tired of clicking. Yeah. Or you can just listen to us and, yeah. Yeah. So you guys are actually drinking. Uh, I, I don't know. Are they still your current favorite beers? But you'd like your first favorite beers. Do you want to talk about the beers that you have in front of you while we're talking about favorite beers? One of the questions that Steph asked uh, in the pre-show interview, I suppose you'd call it, was a, a question along the lines of how did we first get into craft beer? So I asked Mr. Kaminsky the same sort of question, and he gave me basically the same sort of answer as I had. Uh, I was back in college, where we all learned to love beer, but I was a rolling rock and yingling drinker, which ironically I couldn't have had, I probably haven't had either in the last eight years. And a friend of mine said, hey, why don't you try this beer? And it was a Victory Hop Devil. And I tried it, and I said, this is unlike anything I ever had. And it wasn't like a lot of people when they first try an IPA that are sort of really grossed out by the the hops. I loved it. And he had a case, and I just basically commandeered the whole case. (laughs) And, And he was so mad at me and demanded that of course i replace the case so what did i do i just went and bought two cases and 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 basically the rest is history and and i'd never heard of craft beer i was drinking yingling and 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 on a side note i i have to tell this story and then i'll turn it over to bart we used to drink this stuff back in college it was called burger light <laughs> okay <laughs> All right. burger burger okay. they still make this it this was shippensburg I, this was when i was in slippery rock uh, they still make it. I actually bought a 30 pack not too long ago for old time's sake, and it was 10 bucks for a 30 pack. That's, now, that's, now, an indication. that's economical right there. <laughs> Burger Light was $7.25 a case, but we had to go to the next town over's distributor to get it. So when we'd make this trek, we would buy 10 cases at a time of this Burger Light. That's what we were doing back in college. And I'm sure this is a similar story as a lot of other people have had. You know, you drink shit Bleep. beer, I understand. But I'm telling you, the first time I ever had a Hop Devil, it was it was literally like I had an epiphany, and, and ever since then I've been a, a Hop Head, if you will. It's interesting because actually when I saw that in the notes, that was one of, if not my first craft beer that I got into. And I had the same experience. I drank exclusively Yingling before that. And I, when I had uh, experienced the hoppiness, it was the same. I loved it. 
And I, I and I was like, I like hoppy beers. I don't know what makes a beer hoppy. I don't know what hoppy means, but I like hoppy beers. And then I started, you know, trying to explore other ones, and then eventually figured out what I was drinking. And uh, but yeah, yeah, I just thought that was pretty cool because that was one of my first too. I think that might have been one of my first hoppy beers too. Yeah, looking yeah. back, <clears throat> I think I have to agree with you guys too. It's funny too for for what Wayne says. I drank uh, <laughs> I drank beers and knew they were hoppy before I even knew what hops were. <laughs> like people actually bartended for the longest time when craft beer started first getting popular. People would, uh, I was asking bartenders, you know, what, what's, what's the taste in this beer? What can I tell people this beer tastes like? I'll just tell them it's hoppy. So yeah. then I would just tell people it's hoppy and they'd be like, somebody one day was like, what does that mean? And I'm like, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> 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 this is before, but, uh, uh, like, uh, Paul was saying too, uh, you know, it's funny. I, my love of beer goes back a lot further than college. It goes back to high school. Um, I'm from a small town called Palmyra, which I, some of you may have heard of being from the Reading or Lancaster areas. But uh, so when I was in high school, me and a few of my friends, two of my friends had fake IDs in, uh, in high school, which is pretty much should tell you something about Palmyra. But uh, <laughs> another friend of mine was a 17 year old kid and looked like he was 35. He actually used to go to bars and not even get carded 17 year old kid in high school. So he also had his own apartment while we were in high school. So <laughs> <laughs> anyways, we started a club called Puba, uh, Puba Palmyra United beer association. And, uh, we met every Wednesday night. We told our parents we were going to watch 90210 and instead we'd meet at my buddy's apartment <laughs> and we would drink beer. <laughs> And uh, we started off with the likes of National Bohemian. Uh, oh, Natty Bo. Keystone Light. Wow. Yes, yes. And it wasn't until... Uh, Keystone Light, always smooth. Yep, always, always smooth. I'll tell you, yeah. It's Keystone Pounders. And uh, that's where my love of beer started back in high school. I was just infatuated with it. And, you know, to this day, I really don't discriminate against any beer. You know what I mean? Well, maybe some, but not, <laughs> not too many. It was but. one of the things that Bart and I and Kevin were talking about on the way down here. You know, as much as we... I wouldn't consider either of us beer snobs, but as much as we love good beer, I'll still still drink a Bush Light. Yeah, I will. <laughs> and I like I said, I just bought that. I I went in Westies. If you guys are familiar with Westies, there's a really awesome uh, distributor, literally right around the corner, and they have a discount rack. <laughs> <laughs> no craft beer discount rack. Oh, it's, it's, really? It's insanity. So I always go back when I walk in. I think uh, two weeks ago. I got a case of uh, Anderson Valley Summer for like 30 bucks. It was nuts. And they had this case not too long ago, Burger Late 30 pack. <laughs> and for old time's sake, I had to buy it. And, and you know what? You know, I, we have uh, season tickets to the Redskins. We, I always take something that's, you know, shotgunnable, right. if you will, <laughs> yeah. down there. And, you know, as much as we love good beer, I'll, I'll, I'll drink. I'll drink a bush. Yeah. I will. <laughs> Well, I've said it Don't hold it for, against me. Yeah, yeah. For, for me too. It, it, it's it's a situational thing. If I'm out tailgating a, a football game or a baseball game, I'll have a Miller Lite. Bring it over. I'll even I'll even resort to Mad Dog if I have to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that might getting, be a little wow. far. Yeah. 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 Only when the Miller Lite's out. I don't want to I don't want to leave Kevin out of this conversation. I, what was your introductory introductory craft beer? Um, if you could pick it off the top of your head, because you didn't get a chance to think about it beforehand like they so, did. Okay. <laughs> um, I really didn't drink till after I was 21, um, and it was lame. As far as you know, <laughs> five months ago. No, <laughs> um, I started out with Land Shark, which isn't a craft beer, but I moved on to the likes of like Blue Moon and slowly got into it. Like a lot of people, that's um, a good progression. Hey, you know what? I used to like Blue Moon too. You know what? Used to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Then you, then We're you moved on the Yingling on to- days. It was like kind of cool. oh, an orange on my glass, you know. Ooh, and then yes. you eat the orange. It's is it soaked in the blue yeah. moon? Yeah. It was fancy. It was oh, fancy. Absolutely. Yeah. And then they moved on to Ho Garden and went on from there. That's a, that's a pretty solid progression. Actually. Yeah, I think. yeah, that's no. a pretty that. And now now I take, now I take pilgrimages to Three Floyds and <laughs> there you go. okay, yeah. progress quickly. So there it is. <laughs> yeah, and then once it starts, yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> every it's weekend the escalation. What beers can I go get this weekend? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So. Now that you guys are, are here, oh, you know, I guess we didn't get uh, over to you, Dean. What was your introduction to craft beer? I actually have a good story. Or, oh, oh, and <laughs> Mallory's got one. Mallory's got a good we'll story. We'll let her go uh, first, I guess. Well, I mean, of course, the whole, when, you know, you're 21 or even younger, you do the whole Miller Lite thing. So, you know, my beer choice for a while was Miller Lite. And actually, Dean and my first date... We split a pitcher of Miller Lite. <laughs> Don't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> but he did, like, craft beer before that. I wasn't so much into it. But um, so Miller Lite 
stuck with me for a while. And then one of my first craft beers was Dogfish Pumpkin. Oh, and then, so I did the basic bitch thing for a while, and I drank a lot of pumpkin beers. <laughs> but after that, I did move into a lot of, like, stouts, and that's still what I've stuck with. I'm not a hoppy person. I'm not really into IPAs too much. Um, but I basically stick with my stouts and porters and such. So, And I think one of my first ones besides a pumpkin beer was Chogue's Java Head Stout. Oh, that's a good Ooh. one. That's a good one. And that's still one of my favorites. That's my introductory to craft beer. <laughs> Yeah, my first experience was um, a family trip, my first legal summer to Portland, Oregon. Um, and my uncle took me about an hour and a half outside of Portland, the Hood River, um, to Full Sail Brewing. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Full Sail Session Lager was my first one. And to this day, it's still one of my favorites. So, um, And then from there, that same week, we went to the Portland's Brewer Festival. And after that, it was done. I mean, <laughs> there was no going back after that. So. Very cool. That's a, that's a good intro as well. Well, um, now that we have those uh, down, so we have the guys from Hopheads who are here to uh, kind of help spread awareness of their brand. So why don't you uh, explain to everyone out there in the podcast verse what Hopheads is and does? All right. Uh, Hopheads actually started uh, probably a little bit over about a year ago inside my head. I uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to. I love the craft. I love craft beer. Obviously, I, I was you know I'm absolutely passionate about beer. I am. Uh, I I what didn't really want to get into. I wanted to figure out a way into the industry without actually brewing beer because I figured I was like I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes it's to brewing too beer. Too hard. Yeah, <laughs> sh- that's true. I'm sure I could learn, but uh, by trade, I'm a graphic designer, and one thing I love designing was T-shirts. So I was like, you know, one day it hit me, which I'm sure I wasn't the first, per- and obviously wasn't the first person to think of it. But uh, hey, I could design T-shirts that have craft beer. Uh, you know, saying slogans, designs on them, and sell them, and being as the uh, craft beer industry is really starting to just explode, and especially in the central Pennsylvania or south central uh, eastern Pennsylvania areas, I really thought it was a good time to get in the market. But uh, I had these ideas of doing, you know, original designs for it, and then uh, not this past summer, but the summer of 2013. I was at a Phillies game and I sort of like had a, an epiphany moment. I ran into a gentleman came up to me and my friends while we were tailgating. Um, I prop him out to this day. His name's Dan Hirschberg. He owns a company in Philly called uh, phillyfaithful.com. And he also owns a national company called rivalrywear.com. And uh, he basically makes sports t-shirts that have sports sayings or uh, designs on it that are specific to an area, but don't actually use sports teams logos or anything like that. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah, so he can actually sell his shirts in the Philadelphia market without any, like, Philadelphia sports logos on it. But they're shirts that fans would know about, like a Broad Street Bully shirt for hockey. You know, yeah, he has a shirt that says, uh, Chip rules everything around me for, like, Eagles coach <laughs> Chip. Uh, so anyway, we started talking. I was I was just, in fact, he probably sold, like, 20 shirts. He came up to us and was like, he introduced himself, told us what he did, started showing us his shirts. And one of the shirts I bought said, Schmidt Happens. Had Phillies colors <laughs> with a big pair of sunglasses Perfect. and Mike Schmidt's mustache on it. I love it. Oh, it's one of my favorite shirts to this day. So it's that type of creativity that went behind it. And I started tell- talking to him about this idea I had. I was like, you know, I had a very similar idea for t shirts in the craft beer industry. So I told him what I did. And uh, a month later, I was working, for, I was on his design team working for Philly Faithful designing t shirts. So then, uh, and that was kind of like a moment for me, like, you know, this could really happen. You know, this guy's doing it with Philly sports stuff, which is obviously popular in the Philadelphia area, but you know, I'm not, uh, and then he took that and expanded into the national market too, by with a company called rivalry Wear that he started. But, uh, that's where it kind of hit me. Like, you know, this is, this is a real deal. Like other people, this guy does this for a living. Now he worked for ESPN in the past and had uh, quite a bit of, you know, he has quite a bit of a network going for him, but I always had a great personality, so I thought the network part, network, excuse me, the networking part would come pretty easy. So, yeah. Yeah. but uh, about last June is when I started putting designs together, probably right at the beginning of 2014, and then last June we put them on shirts and we released them, and uh, we started picking up shows, and now we're obviously playing with a lot of different designs and different ideas. Uh, 
I think our most popular designs are what a lot of us were sporting right now. It's the Hops Nation line of T-shirts. Uh, I like those shirts. Those are, they're yeah, really cool. They're pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. But um, that idea came because I, I actually came up with a She's Crafty design, which I'm sure you guys have seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, right after we released it, I went online. There was another company called Brewheads out there that had a She's Crafty shirt. It was a similar design. It wasn't the same one, but I was like, all right, I'm going to have to start getting a little bit more original, I think. And then, we, of course, we started out with the Just Brew It shirt, which is uh, my <laughs> idea my brother-in-law came up with. But, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, we kind of want to start pushing our direction now to something more unique and something, you know, a little bit different from what, you know, the cheesy sayings and things like that. The Hoptoberfest <laughs> went over very well. Yeah, mm. that's the shirt I have, and I, I love that shirt. I get lots of compliments when I wear that one. Nice. I, I just want to make one comment, Bart. You you made a comment earlier about that a lot of other people are doing this, and that's really what I want to talk about because while a lot of other people are making beer T-shirts, no one out there is anywhere near – the level of being involved in the craft beer scene. A lot of the, the beer t-shirts, because as marketing director, one of my jobs is serv <laughs> surveying the competition. Yeah. And mm -hmm. to be perfectly honest with you, a lot of the competition, and no offense to anybody, but we are, are very craft beer centric. And I think a lot of the other t-shirt purveyors are just a, a lot more in the general beer scene. Yeah, and that's something I, I, I was, I was going to say uh, was that there, I think you do find a lot of beer T-shirts out there that are sort of the obnoxious binge drinking, ah, uh, drunken mm. beer T-shirts, and you don't see beer T-shirts that uh, that focus more on the craft side of it, and even like the brewing and home brewing side of it. You know, I can think of one T-shirt I saw in a shop in New York City that just said hops, water, barley, yeast. Mm. You know, and like oh, Helvetica or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 in fact, when and I, I saw it with Wayne, I took a picture and sent it to yeah. you. Yeah, and Wirebacher has. They have their own take on that shirt. Yeah, which is awesome. and, and but that I can really, off the top of my head, is the only beer T-shirt I've ever seen commercially being sold that's not associated with a brewery that was actually obviously meant for people who know something about beer, who are into beer, to you know, that mm -hmm. would get that you know what that means. You and know? That, and that's part of the reason that we're going to a lot of these beer festivals. And and as much as trust me, we we really want to drive website sales as much as humanly possible. The beer festivals is where the craft beer drinkers are. And that's where we feel that we need to be, and that's why we're really trying hard. Uh, one of the, the festivals we're, we're certainly looking down the line is the Atlantic City Beer Festival. Um, that was actually my very first beer festival, so I've got a little nostalgia as far as that goes, and I'm, I'm actually looking forward to uh, being there for that. It's a huge festival. It's, yeah. it, it's huge. absolutely insane. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. Next, Atlantic City. After that, GAB. I was going to yes. say, yeah. Right. Next November. <laughs> <laughs> Mark it down. There you go, yeah. Mark your calendars. So what's been the, um, I guess, the, the most popular seller for uh, for your designs? Uh, wow, that's a good question. I'm going to have to say Hoptoberfest, I think. Well, the Hoptoberfest, we, we came up with a design – Really what we've been trying to do in the background is we've got a couple main sellers. Hops Nation, Just Brew It, She's Crafty are, are probably going to be in our line forever. Um, there are three of the initial ones that we came up with, and they're very good sellers. But we really want to do seasonal design because we do have a very strong following in this area, and we feel that there's only so many times that people are going to come out to these shows to see us if we don't offer new new merchandise and that's one of the things that that we talk about in in behind the scenes meetings <laughs> yeah that it that as great and and honest to god I love the hops nation it's going to be it's going to carry our brand for years to come i promise you it will but we still do need to offer new new gear coming out you know and it's funny you say those things that i and there's so many parallels between what you're saying about the teasers and the t-shirts designs and what brewers say about their beer offerings you know they have we have these flagship beers that are that you know people will always buy but we constantly have to come up with new things because you know everywhere you get people say they want something new they want something different and it's kind of funny how that that sort of mirrors the same thing as yeah, brewing beer. Right. and that's why uh, that's why trogues has their scratch series I mean, yeah that's, that's they got to keep it fresh and something that's unique and limited mm. pretty much it's funny you say that too because as soon as i uh saw that she's crafty shirt that was done by brew heads and that was a slightly different design um he had like we have like a little tulip glass on there with a heart inside of it because it's obviously for a girl's shirt 
Um, they had like a girl's hand holding up a bigger glass, not quite a tulip glass, but it was something larger. And but we both had a scripty font, and I was even receiving some. There was people out there tweeting our post about the She's Crafty shirt at Brewheads. And I think that's when I sort of discovered it. Like I went on, I was like, oh, Brewheads, they must do the same thing as us. And I hopped on their website and then saw that they had, a, to my horror, they had a <laughs> She's Crafty shirt too. So the first thing I did was I, I saw they had an email on there. I emailed it. Well, one of the owners emailed me back right away. And first thing I explained to him was I, I said, I told him exactly what happened. I said, hey, I came up with a shirt idea. I put it online. I started this company. And uh, then I started seeing people tweet at you, my shirt design. And then I looked on your website and saw you have something similar. I was like, I just want you to know I had no idea that your shirt existed before I came up with that. Well, he emailed me, emailed me back a really nice email saying, hey, you know, the fact that you reached out to me, uh, you know, means that you actually care. And he's like, you know, the designs are not the same. He's like, you know, he's like, we both had the same idea, the same text. But he's like, there's just they're two completely different designs. He's like, I even said to him, I was like, you know, after we sell out of these shirts, whatever, I'll to retire the design and he told me he's like no don't do that he's like if it sells good you know just sell it that's cool that's really cool it was really cool and the last thing he said to me was uh he's like you know light craft brewers he's like i guess we're technically in competition but in the end we all have the same goals you know yeah. we're all out here to promote the product that's awesome we're out here to help each other out and i really think marketing rather than being in competition with anybody i strongly believe that you know the more you help build each other's brand the stronger everybody can become Absolutely. together yeah Definitely. But, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's funny. The number of parallels between selling craft beer t-shirts and selling craft beer. I think, <laughs> yeah. I think it's just the scene. The community. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's that just, the yeah. community is very open-minded and that they're willing to accept new ideas. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, people that enjoy craft beer, being from a marketing perspective, we're, we're a, a demographic. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not a negative thing. No. We, we are traditionally probably more open-minded. We will try new things. We're we're open minded as far as new ideas and things mm -hmm. like that. And that's that's sort of the the basis of of the marketing department over here. Right is yeah. is understanding <laughs> our the, marketing the, department. <laughs> <laughs> In quotes, it's just Paul, but he does an excellent job. <laughs> I'm not I'm not going to take the full nicely, credit. Too. He does, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will certainly not take the full credit. But no, I, I really think that the, that the craft beer scene, and, and I'm not even just talking about ourselves, but the craft beer scene, those that are craft beer fans, those that are home brewers like Mr. Pierce over here, who has unbelievable product. Thank you. We, we, we are all on the same page. Mm -hmm. It's almost like we have that common ground between each other that, you know what, you could not even know somebody next to you. And in this day and age of social media, when people are sitting at a bar stool are so busy on their cell phones, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, but yet somebody next to you <laughs> orders a Elysian Great Pumpkin, and you sit there and you look at them and say, that's a damn good beer. <laughs> yeah. And then spark yeah. up a conversation. <laughs> yeah. So it's almost like beer is the new common ground that we yeah. have with each other. There's, there's a certain – and I've said this plenty of times before. There's a certain level of camaraderie with the craft beer community that doesn't exist anywhere else. Yeah. You're totally absolutely right. right. Part, Actually, of the reason, I will. part of the reason that our, our product is <laughs> sort of sells itself yeah. in all yeah. honesty. Mm -hmm. It's funny too like when you say uh, – I actually have to disagree with you on this one. Um, uh -oh. Damn. It uh -oh. does exist somewhere else. It's different. Throwing down a gauntlet. I think I know where you might go with it. I'm going to go to uh, my favorite style of music, which is heavy metal. That's not okay. where I thought you were going. I'm yeah. glad you went that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I walk up to some guy standing in a store, and he has like a Slayer jacket on or something like that. <laughs> I can start talking Seasons in the Abyss, and we have a bond absolutely immediately. All right. I can Same thing could happen, you know, yeah, yeah. with a craft brewery or somebody in a brewery. You see somebody sitting down, you know, next to you ordering up you know something you know sculpting uh, ipa or something like that yeah you immediately have something in common but <laughs> i obviously you guys can see i have a lot of passion in almost everything i do in life you good know I mean? that's so, good you shouldn't you know, do anything in life t-shirts craft beer passion. and heavy metal <laughs> exactly man i mean what, what else is there <laughs> that's, 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 a good that's, life. All, that's all there is to life. that's a good that's lifestyle to, to life. have <laughs> man <laughs> figured i'd rough it up a little bit in here yeah right exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. That, kevin you're awfully quiet over there Bark's doing all the talk now. <laughs> <laughs> He's just sitting back enjoying his beer. <laughs> so, Kevin, how did you get strung along in this project? Um, I've known Bart for 24 years now. Um, we grew up right next and door to each other. And for the record, that's his entire so, life. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. 
Bart's probably snuck into my parents' pool quite many times in our day. It's very true. Uh, um, <laughs> but um, Nancy, Steve, if you're listening. Kevin, why don't you talk about uh, – one of my jobs with Hopheads is finding and booking shows. And, and it's – I swear, as easy as you think that this might be, it is much, much more difficult than it may seem. And Kevin actually has been a huge help on finding some of the shows that we – so I don't know if you want to talk about that, Kevin. I like brew fests. That's what it comes <laughs> down to. Yeah, I mean, the resident expert. I, I've I've gone to a lot of the brew fests in the past couple of years, um, and I've just been throwing out ideas. I have a couple connections. Um, I know uh, someone in the Arugas chain that deals with the beer buying. Um, I hooked them up with him, um, but through knowing Bart, young in our younger years. Um, we kind of reconnected recently at the Batdorf where they're having mm-hmm. the uh, the event here. Um, I saw him and we just started talking and they have an incredible tap list. So we just talk, started talking about the tap list and, and it went from there. And um, I, I've found some rare beers for him and mm. uh, that kind of launched it all. Yeah, that's pretty much right where it started off. And it's funny, we were just talking about that. Like yeah. we were sitting at a bar. I saw him. Hey, Kevin, how's it going? You know, what? You know, we started catching up on old times because, uh, like, I, he's quite a bit younger than I am. But uh, next thing I know, I asked what he's drinking, and it was at the bat door, so you know it was something good. And then, bang, our conversation goes to craft beer, and now here we are. So, <laughs> heavy metal in t-shirts, <laughs> completely reconnected. Yep, exactly. <laughs> No, I made him into a t-shirt slut. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this should be your official title. <laughs> I'm all right with it. Oh, uh, at the risk of stealing a Segway dance, speaking of the Bat Dwarf. Speaking of. The reason that Mr. Pierce has joined us again in the Beer Busters podcast basement. It's a much better segue than I would have had. All right. <laughs> You're hired. Yeah, right. We'll keep you around. So, yes, the reason we have Mr. Dean Pierce of Pierce Brewing Company back with us is uh, there's a collaboration event that is going on. So, Dean, take it away. Certainly. All right. Well, first of all, we're. Um, I just want to say thanks to Bart and Paul and uh, Kevin for having us out tonight. Um, yes, Bart and I are teaming up for an event coming up here December 12th uh, at the Batdorf in Anvil. Um, it's going to be for uh, Pierce Brewing Company's official Relay for Life team, which is Patty's Pub, um, which actually going back to the whole camaraderie of craft brewing, I created this Relay for Life team on the sole purpose of 100% funding it through the generosity of craft beer. Um, I mean, like everyone was saying, it's it's an industry unlike anything else, and people are so generous and kind. Um, and I do a lot of events, so I figure, why not raise the money and put it to something worthwhile? So it, it's definitely an event that's very close to my heart. Um, the team's named after my mother who passed away. Uh, so, and to have Bart support with it, it's just, it's great. So, um yeah, we're doing. Uh, actually, we can pass pass these around. Yay! All right, it's yes. the uh, there's, there's beer yeah, official beer, with right? This. Yes. The ugly sweater too. The ugly. So yeah, every year I brew a Christmas beer. Um, it's called the Ugly Sweater Series. This is Ugly Sweater Two. Um, I, I gotta say, I like the the labeling on it. It's just US, but I read it as us. <laughs> <laughs> that works too. Um, so this year's variety, it's a Belgian strong dark ale. It's like I said, it's ten and a half percent. Oh um, God, I'm not going to pour that much. much. <laughs> 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 uh, about twenty four IBUs, um, brewed with a lot of chocolate malts, um, also Belgian candy syrup, um, cinnamon, thyme, coriander seed, and some orange peel, and also uh, fermented with cranberry juice for a little tartness mm. and sourness without actually using uh, bugs with it. So this is the beer that the event's named after. Um, and yeah, really, I, Bart, if you want to fill in the details of the event itself, we can. Go. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. It's December 12th. It's going to be from seven o'clock till probably 1130 at night. It's going to be held at the Batdorf restaurant, which is in Anvil, Pennsylvania. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but that awesome place. Yes. Very cool place. Uh, friends of mine that I grew up with, actually the Rotunda brothers, the two older ones, I, they went to high school at neighboring Anvil, Cleona. I went to Palmyra high school, but, uh, I used to party with those guys back in high school, so we've known each other, and it's funny, like, how everybody grows up in life and gets in their own niche. You know, those guys open a restaurant, I start a graphic design business, next thing I know, I'm designing t-shirts, menus, you know, we're all working together, you know, it's... Funny, we started in high school drinking Natty Bow together, and now nowadays we're, <laughs> you know, they own a, a, you know, starting a brewery, a great, you know, restaurant and everything. But uh, anyways, uh, 
Yeah, so they have an upstairs area. It's like a loft area. Um, there's actually two different rooms that can hold about 50 people. So uh, Dean and I were talking about looking at a spot to do like a holiday thing, uh, have a holiday party to feature his beer, the Ugly Sweater, too. Uh, we, the Hopheads definitely wanted to do some sort of a holiday party to, you know, sell shirts. Um, we wanted to do somewhere kind of centrally located for Dean and for us. So the back door seemed very, very logical. And uh, we also are going to design a shirt that is specifically for the ugly sweater, too. That'll double as a T-shirt, and it's going to double as his bottle label, uh, you know, whenever we get to that point where he starts bottling mass quantities of ugly sweater and starts pimping it to the Hops Nations. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, so we will have a T-shirt available there. Uh, And actually, if you buy tickets for the event, the tickets are 25 bucks. Uh, like we said, you know, we're going to cover our costs for the party and then we're sending the rest of the uh, proceeds to Dean's charity, which uh, I love the fact that he's helping out, you know, cancer research because actually my, I've had quite a history of cancer in my family. My father had it. Fortunately, my dad's still here today. So, Well, Bart, we also did quite a bit for the breast cancer awareness yes, as well. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, so when Dean uh, had talked about, you know, hey, do you mind? you know, pushing the proceeds towards, you know, my uh, Relay for Life team. I was like, absolutely, let's do it, man. So we booked everything. Uh, The party is going to – we're basically going to rent the whole – we basically have the whole upstairs to ourselves. Uh, We're going to have raffles. Uh, Everybody that buys a ticket is going to get food. We're going to get wings, wraps. We got a a stone IPA chili on the menu. Yeah, I I saw that on the rundown we have for it. Um, (laughs) I need to try that. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Maybe we can get him to throw some bacon in there just for you. Yes! <laughs> yeah, now right. we're talking. Hey, he'll, I know the cook. I know the chef. He'll look it up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so your tickets will get you a T-shirt. It'll get you entrance into the event. Um, it'll get you $2 beers from – we're going to have uh, Trogue's Blizzard of Hops on draft for $2. We're also going to have whatever Sam Adams seasonal is there at the time. We'll probably be winter lager, but you never know. The seasonals seem to be off season sometimes, but those as long beers, as it's not summer ale. That's yeah, a yeah. different <laughs> podcast, Bart. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Blizzard of Hops, though, two dollar draft. So, uh, so if you have a ticket, you're going to get your T-shirt. You're going to get all the food you can eat. You're going to get uh, access to two dollar pints. Um, you're also going to be able to be entered in a fifty fifty drawing. You'll have opportunities to buy raffle tickets. You can. We are definitely going to raffle off some shirts. Um, also the bar is going to be featuring karaoke that night. Uh, I forget the name of the karaoke guy, but he starts at nine o'clock and the, the bathroom gets a good turnout for it. And most certainly Hophead's gear will be there with all of our gear and we will be selling at discounted prices. And not only are we going to discount, we are going to donate, uh, proceeds from each shirt to Dean's Relay for Life team. That's so awesome. support Hophead's gear, support Pierce Brewing Company, and come out and enjoy Ugly Sweater. I, and to be perfectly honest with you, I, w- I bet Dean wishes he had a, a picture of my face when I took my first sip because this, in all honesty, could be the best beer I've ever had in my entire life. Wow. And that's Whoa, saying thank something. You. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, by the way, there is going to be an ugly uh, – this is an ugly sweater party, the, so wear your ugly sweater. The ugliest and, sweater. <laughs> yes, the ugliest sweater is going to get a prize. That is yet to be determined. We're going to talk about that. You're probably going to get beer and T-shirts. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> let's face it. Yeah. Chances are. <laughs> but if we, You might also get some heavy metal. <laughs> yeah, hey, we could combine all of them. Yeah, you might get me singing heavy metal on the karaoke machine. Later, hey, there you so. go. Nice. <laughs> you should get – a Christmas heavy metal jacket. Ooh, could I like be it. interesting. There you go. <laughs> and in addition to that, I'll be sampling. Um, I'm either going to have four to five beers that I'll be sampling myself. So um, that's not part of the ticket price. That's open to the public, but uh, I'll have plenty of it there. So, but so come out and support us. Come out and support Dean's Relay for Life team. And you know, we only have 50 tickets available, so that they are very limited. So 75, get, I believe. Oh, 75. Oh, I, 75 I, tickets. I apologize. 75 tickets. So. So get tickets while they're available. And we'll have the link to our uh, Facebook, all of our social media. I'm sure Beer Busters will have we'll the link, too. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yes. So. If you go, I set it up today. If you go to the hopheadsgear.com, it's just H-O-P-H-E-D-Z gear.com, uh, there's a link right on there to uh, purchase tickets. Yeah, huge banner right at the top of the page. Yep. And just to reiterate, you have to have the tickets, right, to get the $2 pints and Correct. everything else. So. Yes. Yep. You can sample beer and you can buy, buy t-shirts. t-shirts without tickets. But if you want the real perks, if you want to eat, you want to get in all the uh, fun raffles and drawings and things like that, and then you're going to have to get a ticket. 
So, but it's for a good cause. I mean, yeah. And I just, I just want to say, I can't wait to see what kind of ugly sweater this guy's going to wear. He's he's pointing to me. I don't um, know, Dan. You, but you know what? It used to be a challenge to find an ugly sweater. You no, know, they're all over the place. They're yeah, easy you to find to, now. I was you know? in a JC Penny the other day. It's a thing. And they have racks of ugly sweaters. Yeah. I'm like, really? <laughs> you know, it makes I, it too easy. I have it does to make say, it too easy. my ugly sweater I and my, my go to sweater is from Grandma. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have one from Pop Up. There, there you, you know, go. That's right. I've been to a few ugly sweater It's not events. hideously ugly, but it's ugly enough. It's ugly enough. Yeah. But a lot of people are starting to make their own, which I really I was appreciate. Gonna say, like Sly Fox, I went to their ugly sweater party, and Canal, our friends at Canal Street Pub, they do an ugly sweater party every year, and there have been some really creative, homemade ugly sweaters. So I, I think, challenge our listeners, if you're going to go, make your own. I know who's going <laughs> to. Dan, you need to go in ugly sweater body paint. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> That might steal Boom. the competition. I'm, I'm Maybe throwing that's the he, pen down. After, after he pencil. drinks a few ugly sweaters. <laughs> yeah, right. It'll, it'll, yeah, it's come with an ugly sweater and then, and then, and then, and then, then rip it off. <laughs> it's got to be like a tearaway. So you can like... Velcro. Rah, I'll get my dad to do the same thing. Oh, so cool. Yeah, me and Tom <laughs> yeah. will do it. Yeah. All right. That, nice. That'll be all right. Yeah. After a few ugly sweaters. I'm of course. Afraid. <laughs> so that's uh, that is Friday, December twelfth at the Batdorf Restaurant in Anvil. And again, tickets are available. Eventbrite.com links on Pierce Brewing Company social media, Hophead's website and social media. I'm assuming. Yes. All right. Cool. Dean, if our if our listeners can't attend the event and maybe they're not local or they're busy that night, where can they go to donate to your relay team? Um, I have links on my Facebook page of, of the Relay for Life page that you can on go to. On the Pierce Brewing Company mm-hmm. page? Yep, and Fantastic. I'll get them loaded again. Um, I have a separate page for the Relay for Life that you can donate right on that page. Um, and that's Patty's Pub. Yep. yep. Very cool. So if you can't go, make sure you at least donate. Yes. Thank good you. cause. Yep. And good beer. Very good beer. <laughs> I, I like the ugly sweater. The too. ugly sweater, too, is amazing. It, Actually, Dean I brought some of this I finished my over... Uh, what is that two weeks ago i think it was like three weeks, three weeks ago, ago now, yeah. right after he bottled it so you can tell it's starting to condition now it's definitely got uh more uh carbonation to it it, than it did can be ago. dangerous though yeah, it's, it's, it's really easy drinking can, for what is yeah. it 10.1 would not know it's, yeah it's over 10%. what's everyone think about the cranberry juice because that's the first I time i ever it. like it i mean what i like is good. it gives the impression of a sour that's which, a, Mm, that's exactly but what I was going to say. <laughs> it doesn't threaten yeah. my words right out of my yeah. mouth. So. Yeah. You get the tartness, yeah. but yeah. it does yeah. You expect it to be so much more sour in the end, but then it's like an earthiness after. You, you get yeah. that chocolate malt for a kind of sweet finish. Yeah. 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 yeah, it starts with the sweet belgian notes that you would get, and then you get the tartness from the from the juice, but and I then it ends, you're right, malty and earthy. I was going to say, it doesn't end. You, you feel like it's going to end much more tart than it does, yeah. and it, it kind of comes in in the end and surprises you with a little. And then you're like, this is what? 10%? 10? Oh, God. And then you glance at the note and like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> it was funny. Last year I brewed the ugly sweater number one, and it came out to be about 13%. But we had an ugly sweater party at my house at the time, and none of my friends knew craft beer at that yeah. point. And they're, it ended up in, they're in the very yeah. messy. I'm going to clean up later, yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, my. Uh, we should, but, no, I mean, it was just funny because I'm at a, you know, we're at a party, you know, drinking. and I think a beer that accompanied that party, too, was the 15% barley wine. Yeah. Or the 18% was, barley wine, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah so climbing. we had that and the 13%. They're wondering why I'm not chugging this beer, and I said, well, you'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's also, this is why yeah. I gave each of us an extra tasting glass, because I figured we would not be able to just gulp this. I figured yeah. it would just sit oh. on the side while Whoops. we're... <laughs> as, as Dan's glasses are. So I, I just have to verify. You you said people were playing beer pong with uh, that oh. Believe it or not, yes. Yeah. And yes what? Wow. <laughs> Yeah, we tried to push the lighter beers on them, which was still about 6%, but... My friends are an interesting Sessible. group of people. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that Most, most of them spend, spent the night. I'll put yeah. it that way. Yeah. Man, most little... of them made made patterns for their own ugly sweaters on the floor. <laughs> 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 very passionate about Lord of the Rings series. And so Ooh, Dean and I kind of sat in the corner. We're not <laughs> ugly sweater really brought that out, made for some good entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We sat there and just listened to the entire heated, Lord of the Rings heated conversation. Debates, yeah. Yes, very heated debates. <laughs> Oh man! Wow. <laughs> and I will say, my dad will be at the ugly sweater party, and uh, he's a very good. Karaoke. If you don't have a reason to go yet, right there. That's your you reason. Yeah. <laughs> the Beers Tom Brewing Company awesome. brand ambassador. Surprisingly, he is a very good singer. Believe it or not. Really? So, yeah. uh, he's going to be on that karaoke. Nice. Machine. Yeah, he'll very be. Nice. Yeah. After nice. a few ugly sweaters, he probably will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've yet to meet Tom Pierce. Oh, oh my sounds gosh. like he's quite a legend. You're in for a treat. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. I think. Are you sitting right near his? 
autograph. Uh, he right did autograph the, the, uh, uh, right the table. Right here in front of me. The beer must be good. All the bottles are empty. Tom Pierce. Uh, you know, <laughs> Dean's dad. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> Tom made the soundboard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is ugly sweater too... Completely like conditioned yet, or um, I mean, it's about it's about a month now, so yeah. it probably go a little bit yet. Mm -hmm. um, it's a higher alcohol beer, so sometimes they take a little bit longer mm -hmm. to condition, but um, it'll be it'll be pretty it'll be ready to go by the time. Yeah, by yeah. Time. I feel like it's ready. To go and right also now. for that for the event we're doing, I'm also bringing a white whiskey barrel and vanilla uh, cream ale. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a white. Let that sink in. <laughs> white whiskey barrel you. and vanilla bean cream ale. What? <laughs> <laughs> Absorb it. Um, Is that anything like a Genesee cream ale? Uh, <laughs> it's about it's about seven percent. Um, no, it's not. I just, like, of course. <laughs> yeah, I would hope so, but no, it's uh. So I'll be bringing that. I'll be bringing my holiday porter, my Irish red ale, and then the ugly sweater. So. Well, well I kind of want to drink some more, so. Uh, Give me a beer. All right, so a bottle so, made it's not much less way it. to me. Oh, well. There you go. No, oh. no, I got a little. Bit. <laughs> That's a problem with having seven people. One, two, three, mm. four, five. Are there any? Did eight I, people? Did I at least get table. floaty bits in? Like, are there floaty bits at the bottom? Floaty no. bits here. Everybody's handing you their glass so oh, you can no, have them. If we I, all I give a little, it. no, can... thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it, though, guys. Wow. Here, you got a full bottle of ugly sweater. That's true. Sweater I have ugly so. sweater two in front of me, Ooh. and it's mine. This tastes oh like um, Yoo-Hoo. Oh, it's very good. So, Paul, you brought this one. You want to talk about what we have in front of us? As I mentioned earlier, I am a, a certified hophead. I, I absolutely love all hoppy beers, pale ales, American pale ales, and frankly, I do do not like stouts. I do not like porters. I especially do not like porters, to be perfectly honest with you. Wow. No, I... I blast 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 but, but before... <laughs> before out get out. Yeah. Before I am Richard kicked out... Him, right. Before I am kicked out, <laughs> as a matter of fact, at the homebrew event that we were at, I had some high, high-quality porters and stouts. But in my days, this Terrapin Muhu is legitimately my go-to, and I absolutely love it. And even if, if even if you out there are somebody that does not care for a stout, does not care for a porter, I guarantee you that this Terrapin Muhu will be absolutely well received by you. Terrapin takes it up a notch and puts uh, some white chocolate in there too, in a special run bottle. Ooh, yeah, it's really Ooh. good. It this tastes is, just like you. It really does. And it, 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 well, I would say it, but it, it's richer. And I think a little darker in flavor, a little mm -hmm. more like dark chocolatey bitterness. Yeah, not as watered down. As yeah, watered yeah, definitely not as watered down. Much tastes more. like it, but is legally distinct from. Yes, you, <laughs> similar but legally distinct. I think that the that what really threw me off is one of the first couple of times. Like I said, I got started with the hops, and one of the first couple of times I tried to branch out, I had this, and I I don't even want to say the brewery because I don't want to besmirch their name, but it was a smoked porter, and it was just vile. <laughs> and I think that that turned me off to to very dark Strong beers. Words. And I, it, it's been a while since I've been able to accept it. But I'll tell you a couple of others that I've – I actually had a, a, a couple today before we came down here. I'm, I, I, I wasn't – I'm not slurring my words, so I know I'm in good shape. Um, the, <laughs> the, no, you are. The, <laughs> if you, you say so. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the Elysian Pumpkin Chino. Ooh. Phenomenal, and I also had the. Why can I not think of it off the top of my head? Because you, <laughs> yeah. you were pre gaming. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, I got it. Southern Tier Warlock. Ooh, Ooh. Yeah. Very I haven't too. had that one. So I, I am branching out. So please forgive me that I said what I said about porters and and stouts. But I'm I'm there. We are all on a beer journey. That's exactly That's like, how um, I am with sours. I used to, yeah. I, I could not stand them, but now I'm finally. I'm converting I'm, you. Yeah. Mostly thanks to Steph. I'm, I'm getting the taste for them. Mm. And we throw, it, throw it at you enough times eventually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Something's going to stick. Especially though. one of them you'll like now. I, they, that's how it goes, I think. I think just depending on your palate and your taste buds, like there's just an evolution. Eventually, you're going to like it all. I actually just <laughs> read an article, The Seven Stages of Your Beer Journey. And oh, it really? Start, it started out just like at least Bart and I. 
you know, you drink your shit beer and then you get your hoppy beer and then you move on to the stouts and then you move on to the sta- sours and then all of a sudden you come full circle and you now then you'll just drink whatever. Yeah. It was I, and you know what? I will find that article so you can put it on the website. It was a, it was an amazing read. It sounds really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That sounds right. I, the only part I didn't agree with it is it brings you back to like if you start if at, you read the article yeah, you'll was, you'll get where they're coming from. Yeah, I yeah, saw yeah. That. Stouts and stilettos. Yeah. yeah, it brings you back to like your if your starting beer was Miller Lite, you cycle the whole way through the craft, and you eventually end at Miller Lite. I don't feel that. Not no. to say that you end on Miller Lite as being your beer of choice, but <laughs> but you'll drink. You it can again. tolerate it. Again. Okay, it again. I can see that. Yeah, just hmm. no Corona. <laughs> <laughs> I can't my, actually. My Corona. Well, uh, Wayne, shall we fire up? Let's shall. The game? Let's shall? Is that let's actually? Shall. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's shall. Oh, it's my favorite music. Well, now I'm going to delete the other two. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like, I like when you mix it up. So uh, we have, a, like we said mix earlier. Like this? Uh, no, not at the same time. That's, <laughs> okay. that's just a cacophony of <laughs> nastiness. <laughs> We have a table bursting at the seams today, um, so I usually try and do a game where I have... Uh, oh, welcome to Happy Fun Time Games, by oh, the way, yeah, by if the you way, didn't know, yeah. this is what we're doing right now. Okay, thanks. Um, I usually try to do one question per person playing the game. Um, unfortunately, I only have four. <laughs> there are a lot more people here, um, and I'd like to invite everyone to play along. So uh, we're going to play... The continuation of the beer education of the Beer Busters Nation, Libation or Fabrication, 2014 GABF Edition Part 2, Return of the Beer Strikes Back. You know how it works. I don't need to tell you. There's fake beers, there's real beers, and there's guessing. I'll give you the name of the beer. Everybody guesses whether they think it's a real beer or fake beer. All of the phony beers in today's game come courtesy of an article from FirstWeFeast.com, which lists some of the most absurd beer names from the recent 28th Annual Great American Beer Festival. Thanks to Weyerbacher Shales Rep and recent Beer Busters guest, Natalie DeChico, who chaired this article on Facebook, providing me with fodder for today's festivities. All of that will probably sound familiar for you, to you because this is a continuation of the same game we played in the last episode. Longest intro ever. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thanks, Ebert. <laughs> <laughs> we are, for the first time in Beer Busters podcast history, going to begin to my left with Mallory. You know, I have to say, I wrote a note to Steph that I'm not too Because <laughs> everybody's playing this game. So tell me, do you think this beer is real or fake? Rabid Beaver. I have to say fake. You're going to say that's fake. All right, Dean, what do you think? I'm going to say real. You're going to say real. Dan, what do you think? I'm going to go real as well. You're going to go real as well, Steph. Real. Real. Paul. Fake. Fake. Bart. Real. Real. And finally, Kevin. Real. All right, so... <laughs> Dean, Dan, Steph, Bart, and Kevin are all correct. This is difficult with this many people. Yes, it is a 7% rye IPA by Belching Beaver Brewery in Vista, California. It was a gold medal winner at the World Beer Championships in 2014. The crew at Belching Beaver boasts such monikers as Spock, The Gimp, That's awesome. Big Beaver, and Beaver King. So what, what was the name of the beer again? Rabid Beaver. I had to. I was just going to listen to it for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to move along to beer number two. And uh, Dean is going to go first on this Ooh. one. And this beer is called British Ugly. Oh, music. <laughs> British <laughs> Ugly. I'm going to say true. You're going to say true, real. All right. Dan, what do you think? I'm going to say no go. It's fake. You're going to say no go. It is fake, Steph. Real. Steph is going to say real. Paul is going to say fake. Fake. Bart is going to say fake. Fake. Kevin is going to say fabrication. Fabrication. (laughs) And finally, Mallory, what do you think? I'm going to say real. You're going to say real. Okay. That means Mallory, Dean, and Steph are correct on that one. That beer is also real. It is a 3.9% ABV English mild ale. By Four Fathers Brewing, the number four, as in there are four of them, not four as in B4 Fathers. How does that work? In You'll have to ask them. In Valparaiso, Indiana, if I pronounce it correctly, which yep. opened just this year in 2014. It is a true session beer with a drinkable palate overflowing with biscuit and roasty, roasty aromas and a big toasty character reminiscent of a fresh baked hard 
pretzel. These pretzels are making me oh, thirsty. That was a pretzels. real fear. And now, moving along, finally back in my comfort zone, first on this one is Dan. And this beer is called Toss My Funky Salad. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> is that real or fake? Whew. Uh, let's go with... Fake, that sounds like you. <laughs> don't know how to take that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> really don't. Uh, we're not. We're going to stop that now. Steph. Real. <laughs> real. Steph says it's real. Paul, what do you think? I've went fake twice. I'm sticking with it. You're going to go fake. Uh, it ha- hasn't worked for you yet, I don't think. No, it hasn't. I got the winner. We're going to see if it works this time. Bart, what do you think? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll with fake, too. You're going to roll with the falseness. I mean, I don't think anybody's tossing their salad with this beer. <laughs> <laughs> that, that wasn't That's the just kind of disturbing. <laughs> that wasn't the question whether whether anybody had tossed their salad with the beer. The question is, is it a real beer? <laughs> Kevin, what do you think? I'm going to go real. You're going to go real. Mallory, what do you think? It's so creative. I'm going to have to say real. It's so creative. You're going to have to say real because I couldn't possibly be that creative. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this isn't my first dance with Wayne's games. <laughs> and also, I don't know the last time her and I agreed on so much, but I'm going to say real also. You're going to say real as well. Well, that is a good strategy because you, Mallory, Steph, and Kevin are all correct because that beer is also really, Can we really get a fake one? Real. <laughs> You'll have to wait and see. 6% Kombucha Brett Ale by Tomoka Brewery in Ormond Beach, Florida. Toss my funky salad. Uh, there is a this is completely unrelated to the beer. There's a blog post on the website for the brewery uh, that they felt was so important it, important it warranted a link in the main navigation mef- menu, and it's called Frontier Sucks, and it is in their own words, complete with a picture of a fiery demon. We felt compelled to share our recent experience with Frontier Airlines after a horrifying ordeal that left us speechless, especially after the refusal to well give a shit, frankly. So there was a whole big, long diatribe about how much this airline is terrible. So it's a bit off topic for a brewery website. Kind of interesting. But they're obviously pretty pissed. And I read the whole post, and I think they had a right to be pissed. So don't fly Frontier Airlines, kids. But do drink. Toss my funky salad. Not kids. Not kids. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that correction. <laughs> Moving on to our fourth and final beer. And unfortunately, we won't get to go all the way around the table with people going first. And Steph's going to go first on this one. And this final beer is called Jean-Claude Van Blonde. Real. <laughs> Steph says that is real. I Paul. have to get one right. So I'm going fake. <laughs> all right. Fake all the way. Bart, what do you think? I'm jumping back on real. You're jumping back on real. It's real. Uh, he's saying it's real. Kevin says it's real. I'm jumping back on Toss My Funky Salad. <laughs> Mallory, do you think it's real or fake? I'm going to say fake. You're going to say it's fake, Dean. I'm going real. You're going real. And last but not least, Dan. Fake. Dan says it is fake. Dan, you're wrong. (laughs) Dean, you're wrong. No, Paul Dean was wrong. right. Oh, Dean was right. Mallory was wrong. There are so many names on this piece of paper right now. <laughs> I it, got your back. It's it's real, and Steph always double-checks my math. Yes, Jean-Claude Van Blonde is a 6.5% Belgian blonde ale, obviously, by Wits End Brewing Company in Denver, Colorado. This brew is inspired by the action hero in all of us. It features a Belgian yeast strain and is built on a lighter malt profile with just a touch of oats for a silky body and some additional depth. You will find this beer intriguing and hard to define, which is just the way they like it. That's a verbatim quote for the website, in case you couldn't tell. I've actually heard of that beer before. That's how I knew it was real. Uh, I didn't see that that earlier. I know. I thought about it. I thought about elaborating, but I didn't want to. You didn't want to give it away. You see, unless you're the last one to guess, yeah, you can't. You can't elaborate on your answer if if you're pretty sure. So, if if you're keeping score at home, kids, all the beers today were real. Because I'm lazy. All the beers the <laughs> last time we played this we're game real. were also all real. Yeah, so these were all real. It was a long article with a lot of really good beer names, and yeah. I wanted to just say them all. On the you don't podcast. have to make them up when they're right there for you. No. So. You could have thrown one fake one in. I, I could have. <laughs> Paul I is could've. pissed. <laughs> <laughs> He's really, really not happy, but hey. He just threw his headphones. <laughs> yeah. Rage quit. Oh, rage quit. Oh, are we finally going to have our podcast rage quit? <laughs> <laughs> we, need a, we need like a klaxon that goes off if somebody rage quits the podcast. <laughs> 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 podcast rage quit. Okay. Okay, after that tangent and going by Steph's c- scores because I don't feel like adding them up myself, our big winners today with four points apiece are Steph, who is already raising the roof, and Dean. <laughs> Dean and Steph with four points are our big winners. Coming in second place with three points, alone in the number two spot is Kevin. <laughs> Tied for third place with two points apiece are Mallory and Bart. And sitting at the bottom, oh, I'm sorry, no. 
sitting next to the bottom with one point is Dan sitting at the bottom with a goose egg for going fake all the way is Paul. <laughs> I'll, I'll take my fantasy football record over the zero. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. So another another good round of heavy fun time game. So in that vein, I think we should learn something. No, 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 your beers. Steph, you should probably wake me up with this segment. Oh, yeah. Well, I was promised a coffee beer and I have to say, oh, I I'm, get it now. I'm kind of sad. We have some amazing beers on the table, but there is no coffee beer. So next time you guys come, you have to bring me a coffee beer. Yeah, that was partially my fault. <laughs> <laughs> the Bean Dream. Actually, that was a vanilla porter. Bart, you didn't even oh. mention that. Oh. Bart, you didn't even mention that you designed the label for the I Bean know. Dream. I did. Yeah, I did. And it's, it's a pathetic. delicious, delicious beer. I've had it a you few know, times f- now, and yeah. it's great. You just really shit the bed on this one all over. I <laughs> <laughs> designed the label. You can't even get one. I know. Right? I know. I have an empty one at home. I could have brought. I guess. But uh, <laughs> an empty one's not helping anyone. We can. Uh, it'll be like in Hook. We'll pretend it's there. Okay. That's true. We could have pretended we were drinking it. Well, let's pretend we're drinking now. My glass is. So theater of the mind. Of <laughs> All right. So if you couldn't figure it out already, we are going to talk about coffee beers today. Coffee beers are any beers using coffee in really? any of its forms to create a, a distinct ranging from subtle to intense character. Coffee beans can range from amber to black, depending on the underlying style. Coffee beers, not coffees. Sorry. Malt sweetness help accent coffee flavor and aromas. Hop flavors are lower than can be expected depending on the style of beer. Under hopping allows the coffee to contribute to the flavor profile while not becoming excessively bitter. Recently, uh, Adam from Benchwarmers Coffee in Fleetwood, Pennsylvania, visited the Berks County Homebrew Club. And I learned that not only does each coffee have a unique flavor, but the flavor also changes as the temperature of the coffee changes, much like beer. For example, the Sumatra coffee that we had offered lots of black pepper flavors when hot, but then flavors of dark chocolate evolved as the coffee cooled. The bottom line is it's important to try different coffees and play around with the different roasts to find out what will work best with your beer style. The goal is to complement the beer with the coffee. My favorite style we tried was the Ethiopian coffee and a very strong blueberry aroma and flavor struck me immediately. And as the coffee cooled, there were flavors of peach and apple um, and finished very milk chocolatey once it cooled off. Adam recommends introducing a small amount of, co- a small amount of coffee grounds during the mash, allowing the coffee to become part of the beer. Two ounces of coffee should be enough for a five to 10 gallon batch, depending on the flavor you're trying to achieve. The coffee from Saucony Creek's North Ram Stout comes from Bench Warmers Coffee. You can find their coffee at West Reading Farmer's Market, Say Cheese in West Reading, or at the Fleetwood Grill, which is where their roasting and production facility is located. After one visit, the question for you will be, however, brew it or brew with it. You like that? Uh. So some popular coffee beers uh, that you can find in the area include Philadelphia Brewing Company's Joe Coffee Porter, their 5% ABV coffee porter, Two Brothers Red Eye Coffee Porter, 9.2% coffee porter, Goose Island Bourbon County Coffee Stout, 13% bourbon barrel aged imperial coffee stout, but I highly recommend don't let it sit too long. Drink it. Don't let it sit or the coffee flavor starts to go away. Um, yeah, if you have it, drink it now. Cigar City's Cubano Espresso, lovely brown ale with vanilla, cocoa, and coffee beans that comes in a can that I stuff my suitcase full of whenever we're in Florida. Uh, Ballast Points Victory at Sea, coffee, vanilla, imperial porter, 10% ABV coffee, vanilla, imperial porter. Uh, as, uh, uh, Bell's Java Stout, 7.5 ABV coffee stout. Terrapin, another Terrapin beer, their Wake and Bake Coffee Oatmeal Imperial Stout, coming in at 8.6%. Uh, we talked about Trogues, uh, their Java Head, which is 7.5%. Mm. Uh, Southern Tier Mocha, 11% ABV, Imperial Stout brewed with coffee and chocolate. And my personal favorite, Wolliver's Organic Alta Gracia Coffee Porter. The first time I had it was actually about a year ago when I was up in Vermont during my residency week at the Drop-In Brewery. You know, I'm impressed because I always say Alta Garcia for some reason. But I had my very first <laughs> bottle of it relaxing in my hotel room in the bed and it was just i loved it because it had real coffee flavor if i'm gonna have a coffee beer i want it to have huge amounts of coffee flavor i agree <coughs> i agree I, I think coffee beers are are, are pretty awesome so i love both coffee and beer me too exactly <laughs> shout out to adam he uh, sent us home with some two ounce samples so i have two bags up there and i'm thinking i'm going to brew one of them and brew with one of them i think that's a good balance that's a good idea sounds good coffee and beer
So, are so we, we don't have any coffee beers, but we do have some beers from Otter Creek, which is also the same as Wolliver's, who brews the Alta Gracia. So... Beer me! Beer me! Beer me! Beer me! Now, don't everybody take it before it gets to me. I know, right? <laughs> we have to take little I, pours. I've actually... I've got a six-pack of this, so I'll pass it on for you. Oh, have Here, a I'll, for this one, oh, I'll start oh. this way. Oh, How's that? thank you. I'm going to take the whole bottle. This was one that we actually had at... Uh, Lancaster Festival, and I was absolutely blown away by this one. I love this beer. Ooh, that smells. Awesome. Otter Creek knows how to make an IPA. When we were, when I was up there it's not last an IPA. November, uh, this is an APA. I guess they they categorize it. Correct? I mean, it might as well be an IPA. easy big fella. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I, I, uh, it's Steph, all right. It's Steph, all right. It's please, all right. Please forgive right. me. Get it right. <laughs> please forgive me. Last it, November, don't hurt me. when Seriously. I was up there, uh, the Pre-game. double dose, the double dose <laughs> double IPA had just been released. The one that they did with Lawson's and uh, uh, a friend of mine that was in the, the guild class with me, Colleen. She and I went to the the tap room at Otter Creek one day for lunch, and uh, we got the double dose right on tap there and. I, they can't make a bad pale ale. Pale ale, IPA, double IPA. They know what to do with their hops. I've absolutely had this before. Mm. <clears throat> I love the aroma. There, there's, uh, yeah. It's nice and, and, and you got like a yeah. sweetness and then like a grapefruit. Mm. It's tasty. It is a good one. It really mm. is. It, it, it really reminds me of an IPA, but yet it's much lighter than an IPA is. And that's yeah. what I like about it because it's got that hop up front of an IPA, but it's not going to kicking the ass yeah it's very citrusy very almost like oh, yeah. lemony which is not a lot of times with with ipas or apas or whatever pas um, <laughs> it, it, it is a, a according to the bottle american pale american pale ale. Um, a lot of times you get like the grapefruit citrus coming out maybe a little orangey and like uh, together with some pininess but you do get some lemoniness in this is this a wet hop I have no idea. Steph's, Steph's, Steph's the expert. You get the it says fresh it. hop yeah. flavor. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what no, I was wondering, no. too. I, it feels like it's... I saw that, and I knew that that was one I had to bring. It's super, super good. Really hop is. on the bus. <laughs> uh, and and the logo is absolutely classic. Yeah. You, you look the logo up online. All of their the logos, logo? the Otter Creek logos are are, are awesome. The, especially, I, I guess a lot of them, is this part of the, yeah, the Brewmaster. Uh, they have Mike on here with his dog and his little, his hippie garb and the buses on there. I like, what's the one that has uh, the two of them driving the bus you're, from head on? You're missing the best part, <laughs> is that he's holding this hop here with the, please describe. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. You're describe doing a great for, job. Describe for the people at home. Uh, I'm gonna let. I'm gonna turn it to Steph. She has to describe <laughs> this one. Give me the bottle. <laughs> Thank you. Is it his cleep? <laughs> Are we talking about his cleep? <laughs> no, it's not a cleep. <laughs> it is a hop. He's a hippie with his little dog and his VW van, and it's a smoking little hop that's smoking up into the letters. I don't so, know that it's smoking. I think it's more about the stench. Oh, so uh, it's a dank stench. Uh, is that what we're referring to? I think to? they're implying that it might be marijuana. It's called, uh, what, what's it called again? What's the beer called again? Overgrown. Overgrown uh, as opposed to something else marijuana related. Underground? <laughs> they um, are in the Hydroponics? Same I don't know. <laughs> but of course. It's, it's just a very unique logo. That's what kind of drew me to it in the first place. Technically, it isn't a logo. It's just, it's just a label. <laughs> Calm down there, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> the Wayne in the group is... <laughs> yep. We we take our, whether it be marketing or whether it be graphic design, very seriously. But, uh, so you know, we're I, drinking Otter Creek Black IPA, by the way, before you get onto your tangent, before we all drink it all, which I really love. It's nice and hoppy, but you get that really solid malt backbone. I'm really digging this style. You know, the Black IPA, as much of an IPA fan as I am, is is at my absolute favorite. And my, my personal favorite is the 21st Amendment Black IPA myself. Ooh, I, I, I haven't I, had that. I actually, and it's in a can. I, I actually really like... I like cans. And this is actually what... This is what the gentleman and I were talking about on the way down here. I'm actually from Carl. Carlisle and Molly Pitcher Brewing just opened in Carlisle and they their whole thing is they're trying to go away from the hops they're trying to go with the malt and what's what's really cool and why I like black IPAs is because of the maltiness and I'm almost getting I'm, I'm coming through that beer rotation that we were talking about earlier that not to say that I'm over the hops 
but I like the maltiness. And Molly Pitcher and Carlisle, who we actually did our very first blog piece with, it's a very small tasting room. It's like maybe 40 seats, but they're very malt heavy. And even their IPA was not hoppy. In the le- I mean, it, there was a small amount of hops to it, but it was very malty. And I will tell you that I really like where they're going with their beer because so many beers out there are really trying to overload the hops. And where's the malt? That's I'm actually a malt fan. That's why I like the Black IPA so much. So I would encourage... And I'm certainly not getting paid to say this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would certainly encourage anybody in the Carlisle area to stop in. They're actually doing a soft open right now. So. Nice. It, very interesting. And in Carlisle, a, a craft beer town that needs another craft beer uh, brewery. All right. So the Hopheads guys wanted to come uh, and kind of represent, I guess. They wanted to bust their balls out and show us their whoa, craft whoa, beer what, whoa, what, what is going on? Huh? Well, we're, we're getting to the heavy hitters now, you know? I can smell this one all the way over here. Yeah, yeah as soon as you a, opened it. Awesome aroma. Send it down to her. I got, I got some. Who didn't get? I'll <laughs> take a little more. Yeah, I brought, well, yeah. I brought I two got bottles, like a, so I mean, yeah. Yeah. I figured I've had this before, so I would save it for the zombie I dust virgin. I actually have not had this before. So this I is... I had it either. Correction. Yes, you did. You had it at imminent liquidation. So many beers that day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that that was one. The, this is what is and why we wanted to bring Kevin on board is because because he can bring you zombie dust. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stupid enough to travel for beer. I mean, there you go. <laughs> on the short term, yes. On the long term, no. My point is, is there are so many events that we need to be at, like imminent liquidation, that we had no idea about. There are so many shows going on in the area that. I, I and I I not even joking you I do easily five hours of research a week looking for shows and I just can't find them this time of year now if we're in March April sure I can find it three or four shows every weekend but we just started and we're looking for more shows so if any of you out there are festival bookers marketers etc please email us. Uh, you know, hopheadsgear.com, feel free to send us an email. We w- we are very interested in being in any show in the tri-state area, as long as it's realistic. Yeah, Kevin's uh, knowledge of the beer industry, the craft beer industry, and craft beers was absolutely blew me away. When I was 24 years old, I didn't care about anything except for Paps Blue Ribbon, kegs, <laughs> sorority girls, and that might have been it. Heavy metal. Yeah, heavy, heavy metal, metal, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yep. At 24 years old, I think Pantera, Slipknot. That's huge back then. <laughs> from Paps, Paps is where it's at. From Dissension. <laughs> yeah, I played in a heavy metal band for a couple of years. Oh, yeah? Cool. Yeah, awesome. yeah. What so. did you play? I played bass guitar. Nice. nice. But Slap yeah, we are we are very very heavy. You yeah. know, we could pro- we 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 could make a band out of podcast guests because Fedge from Trogues is a drummer. Fedge is a ridiculous drummer actually. I've, I've never seen actually seen or heard, heard him play. Then he I, plays in play 7000 bands. Luke from from Evil Genius plays guitar. Mhm. So we got it Nice. So well, you got a bass player here. Yeah. I can play tambourine. Yeah, I play guitar too, but I, I'm just talking about. Yeah, bass player. I was I just know. gonna say Tom from Pierce Brewing Company plays a pretty good cowbell. There you go. <laughs> oh, and apparently he can sing. Apparently, more cowbell, right? Right. So, more. Cowbell. Fez and I just had a long conversation about Judas Priest at Trogues the other nice. day. Actually, yes. <laughs> I, I could believe we, that. We yeah. both just saw him within the last month or two. Uh, yeah, and we were talking. It was funny. What beer is this again? We're drinking. <laughs> this oh is yeah. By the dust. way. Oh yeah, we're drinking the infamous this is zombie dogs. Yeah. Mm. I I like it. It is delicious. It is a, it's a really great beer. I really love the aroma. Is it worth the hype? It's very smooth, which I like. With a it, this is a double, right? No, it's no, just it's a, a pale, pale ale. ale. Single pale. It's a pale yeah. ale. Oh wow. Yeah. Yep. It's still very smooth. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. What's it, the uh, What's the ABV on this one? Six two. Thank you, Steph. What's the beer advocate rating on this one? Mm-hmm. Let's find out. It's ranked thirteenth. 13th. Yep. And Pliny is three, if I remember correctly, right now. One of them. Yeah, one of the top. What is number one? I West believe. Flirtin, 12. What is yeah. it? West Flirtin, 12. Um, I can't pronounce it correctly. It's Belgian. You see why we have Kevin on board now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I <looked> <laughs> there you go. I think Hetty Topper was maybe two, or is that bumped Hedy out? Hetty Topper of... dropped. 
Yeah. Yeah. There's been Consider some backlash. There was a bad batch. Oh, was there? Uh, not too long ago. Uh, and it's great when it's fresh, yeah. in my opinion. It is. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and the thing is, like, like these beers that get super hyped, like the Heady Topper or the Pliny or the Zombie Dust, I mean, they're all fantastic beers. But I think there does there there comes a tipping point where the feverish hype becomes like a little bit like come on like you're you're getting a little carried away mm-hmm, <laughs> you know you know I'm a huge huge nugget nectar fan mm-hmm. and Me too. and and the the different years are are much different all equally as good of course but I heard I, I was a bartender in my olden days and every year we got nugget nectar on. The first comment, the first beer I would pour, the first comment was, well, this isn't as good as last year. Oh, it must be because they moved to the bigger bigger brewery. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what it is. It's your, it's your rose-colored hindsight glasses is what it is. I think it's delicious it's every lo- time It's always it. delicious, but yeah. I, I just love it because my birthday is on, on Groundhog Day, and it usually <laughs> comes out just before then. And I usually get it for a birthday gift. So I wake nice. up on my birthday and I have a case of Nugget Nectar. <laughs> Very good. And that's kind of the beauty of craft beer. I mean, every year the recipe, it's the same, but fermentation between everything, it comes out different. Yeah. And, and Even hops year to year. Yeah, absolutely. Same. You go back and try the same beer every year and kind of compare it. Um, and that, that's the beauty of it. And that's what keeps the industry running. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, it's funny. My my dad, uh, he's uh, the one I was talking about earlier that that uh, you know battled cancer and survived. And you know, I got to give the old man credit. He's seventy three mm-hmm. now, and <laughs> he's a craft beer lover just like me. You know, he actually makes his own wine. So he and he makes damn good wine. He uh, retired really? from the, yeah yeah my old man. He uh, <laughs> he retired from sales, but in college he got his BA in chemistry. So now he's finally getting to use his chemistry degree, and he he makes wine. And I mean, he makes every variety you can. Your think dad of. needs to write a book. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right. Or he needs to come on this podcast. I was just going to say. We should have your dad and Tom. You know what? I was going to say the same thing. Dude, I'm not even kidding. Yeah, my dad is. Bring bring him to the ugly sweater party. Yeah, he'll be there for sure. He has twice the personality I do. I say we just, we get them both here and just give them both microphones and hit record. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Put some beer on the table. My old man will take every year, well, until this year when they didn't make Flying Mufon, we take a case we buy a case me and my dad will split a case of Chogues flying mufon we'd stick it in the basement and then bring up the case from last year a year later and drink it a year old and he started doing that with nugget nectar and it's pretty it smooths out the i love the extra bite of the hops but for my dad he likes it a little bit smoother so he'll let it sit actually for a while and and it's funny like i'll buy some and bring it over and he'll be like oh i've had this this is a year old you know we'll taste the difference and it's it's just fun you know being able to taste it's funny too because the new uh, oh, we got the Pliny now? All right. <laughs> I was going to say, make sure wow. some of that gets over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the uh, newer uh, Nugget Nectar was very clear. Like, fil- you know, you could see the filter. There was, wasn't really anything. Then the older Nugget Nectar that aged for a while was actually very cloudy. But you could taste that the hops obviously mellowed in the older Nugget Nectar as opposed to, like, the sharpness or the bite that it had in the new one. But mm-hmm. it's one of my favorite things to do with the old man because I'll be sitting there. I'll bring over a six pack of something he'll be like oh i've had some of that in the basement for a year we should see the difference and yeah, you know, yeah that's always interesting yeah. what yeah, ages really well is. and what does not age exactly so well. yeah. <laughs> that was fun when we did the mad elf vertical when yeah. uh, greg yeah. orth was on and, and that wasn't two years one was the current year and the one was like three or four years right in, i honestly don't remember but I, was, I, won, I thought it was just one year i remember one being very cherry forward yeah, and yeah. one not so much no he had the current year's mad elf and then he had one i think that was two or three years back do I need a Although when we were at Trogues, we were told that uh, one of the founders um, has a has a bottle of the first the very year first one yeah. in his office. Will they ever open it though? That's the thing. I don't know. So, as we uh, sort of made reference to, we're moving on to Pliny. Yes, yes we are. The, the Very excited for this. Yes, the elder, not the younger. <laughs> you can only get that for Youngers, about two weeks. <laughs> yeah, you have to you soon. have to respect your elders though. Soon. Yeah, exactly. But you got to get up really early and be willing to wait in line to get it and pay like a shit ton of money for four ounces. Those are three things I'm not willing to do. Yeah, so <laughs> that's why I've had it and you haven't. I'm not willing to do all three of them at once. Maybe one at a time. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, guys. Jeez, Dan. Have you you've Greedy never had much? it? I've never had it myself, and. Nope. People are waiting hours for this beer. Oh, that 
Mm. Calling them out. Well, no, this this is much more. This is the one that's brewed year round. The younger is the one that's brewed once okay. a year. That yeah. Young, younger's brew pub only. You can only get it for two weeks in February. That type of crazy stuff. And there's a, a handful of bars in the Philly area that get it. Mm. If that. I like it. I like it very much. But is this something that is very? I I, I I've heard of it. I get it. Is it something to write home about? To me, no. Yeah, it's um. This was bottled it, September thirtieth. Just a, to give it, you perspective, it's so a delicious it's beer. It's oh, it's good. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But it's kind of like I said. Hold. I was saying earlier, like there comes a point where it's just it becomes nothing but hype. Like there are beers it's, it's, we've all honestly, had beers that are like mind blowingly awesome. I've had Elder many times, mm-hmm. and in my personal opinion and my experience, it is way better on tap. Yeah. It is one of my favorite beers, hands down. When I go to, I've been to the to Russian River to the brewery. I had it on tap there. I've had it a couple times at Teresa's. I've had it at Monks. It, to, in my opinion, it's better on tap than in the bottom. Any of those places close by? That you just Monks listed? is in Philly. Teresa's is in Wayne. Ah, okay. So yeah, Russian River. Russian River. Wayne, Teresa's in you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I right. prefer Teresa's on a good day. It gets it quite often. Yeah, Russian River you can get in the Philly area because they have mm. a different distribution so list yeah. than the rest of the state. I gotta say, I agree with my good friend uh, Chris Harvey on this one. That uh, Heady Topper is probably better, better beer than this. Than the Piney. My yeah. favorite IPA is not Heady Topper, and it is not Pliny. Mine is uh, La Cumbre Elevated IPA. That's my oh, favorite that's IPA, one. hands wow. down. Okay, Hands so is that what is that what we're going to end the show with? Favorite IPAs? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> All right, go ahead. What's your favorite IPA? Right, you're putting me on the spot. Go can, for it. Can we uh, look? You're listen, me I got listen. I got zero in game time. Can we go the <laughs> other way around the table? Dan, Dan, what's your favorite IPA ever? Period. Um, Ooh, all of God, them. I have to. Think. <laughs> I, I don't know. You I, know what? Perpetual I, IPA is a phenomenal good. IPA, it's, too. It's a yes, very it good go-to. It's not to. limited. You don't have to wait in line for it. You go to the brewery. You can have it fresh. Are we week. are we talking limited release? Or are we talking any, IPA. Any, any IPA? Any IPA ever any to exist. IPA ever. I can't pick a single favorite beer everywhere, but if I was stranded on an island and somebody <laughs> told gun me... Gun to your head. Yep. <laughs> you... <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I will drop off an unlimited supply of one beer. The rest of the time you have on this island, I would pick Nugget Nectar. That's a phenomenal beer. But Nugget Nectar is not an IPA. Well, why don't we go pale ale? Makes it much easier. It does. Because, <laughs> it widens it up a because bit, yeah. Nugget Nectar is without question my favorite beer on the face of the planet, but it's not an IPA. I wouldn't even call it my favorite beer, but if I was stuck on a stranded island, that's the beer I would choose. But that's not the question. The question is this what's your, your favorite, favorite IPA? Right, I don't know I, if I can I, choose I have, Good stalling. I have mine. <laughs> I'm going to go... With Elysian Immortal is my favorite. I have not had that. You can't do much better than that. So, Kevin, what's your favorite IPA? I'm excited for this answer. Pass. Oh, (laughs) you're gonna Pliny. I real quickly, I'm gonna agree with you, Steph, with the Sculpin. If I had to, oh, I didn't even think of Sculpin. Yeah, if I no, Elevated is still number one, but Sculpin is a freaking mm, amazing. Yeah, I'm just gonna pick that just to end my conversation. All right, Kevin, (laughs) (laughs) I'm not huge into hops, to be perfectly honest. Um, I I love my pumpkin beers, and um, coming from the hophead side of this, it's not not a good uh, notion, but. I do, I do love um, Pl- uh, not Pliny. Pliny's relative here. Uh, Russian Rivers Blind Pig's really good. Oh yeah, it's one Pig of really awesome. good ones. Wayne, whichever one is in my glass. Yeah, we do. <laughs> but gun to your head. Whichever, <laughs> I really don't know. I I, uh, I mean, it mentioned Nugget Nectar, which is something that popped into my head, but we're quickly told that it's not an IPA. It, what I is Nugget not, Nectar? I, it's an imperial. Yeah. Amber, yeah, yeah. Which it, I have no clue what What's the, the IBUs is. on that bad boy. It's like eighty five. Yeah, it's up there. But I, I have. Would somebody please educate me on what the difference is between an IPA and Imperial Amber? Dean, go, Dean. <laughs> there you go. Malt. Seriously, <laughs> seriously, your malt the, profile. The, malt, yeah, the IBUs. I mean, it, that's the thing about craft. There are. It's, I mean, there's some there's fuzzy so edges many, at the there end. There's so many guidelines styles, over yeah. pulsing. The IBUs on I mean, on uh, Nugget Nectar are ninety three. I mean, yeah. IBUs has nothing to do with it. ABV has nothing to do with it. It comes down to your malt profile. That's the that's the difference. I'm not a home brewer. I will fully admit. Enlighten me, Dean, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think Steph already, you know, pretty much said it's it. But the malt profile, you said. Yeah. 
comes down to your malts. I mean, your IPA, your IPAs are going to be more golden and they're going to be lighter in color and your ambers are, are going to be just that amber in color with your reddish hues. And, you know, you're using malts of a, of a, of a higher level bond and you're using more, um, you're getting more caramel notes out of the, the, the malts than you would an IPA. Gotcha. An IPA, you want it to be more crisp. You want it to be more about the hops. So would you say less malt in an IPA than? Well, and not necessarily. I mean, if you're making a, a 10% Imperial IPA, you need a crap load of malts yeah, to get yeah, that okay. 10%. Uh, it's just a different kind of malt, a more roastier malt. Gotcha. Why don't many other people make an Imperial Amber? Because such as Trogues has perfected it, so yeah. why try? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, oh, Trogues has perfected uh, – a few other things and other people still attempt it as well. I think there are other Imperial Amber ales out there. There's just, um, not as much, not as there's not a market for it. Like there are with IPAs and and everything else. Nugget Nectar has a really nice market. They do. But I mean, Nugget Nectar isn't your typical, amber beer so nugget nectar gets treated like some of your your top rated beers too it once it comes out it becomes such a hype and like yeah. you said before i mean it, it, it loses its its allure down the road um and it's local the, for us yeah absolutely i mean i'm looking on here to like grand teton they make their bone warmer imperial amber and you have uh triangle brewing company imperial amber i mean these are breweries that are not near us but you know Apparently, ABC has made a uh, yeah. an Imperial Amber also. It is uh, ABC Brewing, not Appalachian Brewing Company. Uh, there is actually an ABC Brewing oh. out there. They make a, a, a Henrik Imperial Amber. So there are other Imperial Ambers out there. It's just if you live in central eastern Pennsylvania, you're going to know about Trogues and you're going to know about Nugget Nectar. It's just, you know, it's what we know. And I think my bias on my, my Desert Island beer is based on, you know, the fact that I you know, over the past how many years, Nugget Nectar's, you know, just been there with me. Yeah. You know, how to... It's comforting. Yeah, it's, exactly. And it's drinkable. It's yeah. a beer that you can just drink over and over again and mm. it's it's delicious. I love it. Yeah, I me absolutely. too. I look forward to it every time every time of the year when it comes yeah, out. Me but too. I'm if I lived looking forward to it right now. <laughs> 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 if I lived on the West Coast, maybe it would be something different, yeah. you know, so you never know. We'd have to mail you Nugget Nectar all yeah. the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd mail you Russian River <laughs> in return. That's right. So we absolutely. Have Mallory for your uh, yeah, we haven't did, made it around the table yet. Yeah. Wait, did, uh, you, did, I, I dodged yeah. the question because okay. I really don't know. I really can't. I was thinking though, when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, IPAs, uh, Stone, enjoy a lot by. of what they do, the enjoy buys, even just their regular their IPA, yeah. their um, uh, what is the the uh, ruination? Yeah, uh, just all the the Goddardamarung, Goddardamarung. Oh, that was amazing. Sometimes, and I'm not into the like like into like super hobby crazy blow your face off bitterness hobby beers well sometimes all the time but when you're in the mood for that and you want an ipa that's just going to shove a firecracker of hops up your ass i think stone is yeah, one of the stone best places to go yeah. there's a reason mitch Steele wrote an ipa book yeah <laughs> may we just plug the ugly sweater event december the 12th 12th Seven at the Badorf. <laughs> okay. Badorf. M-A-P-I. And let me just be the first to say that the Beer Busters podcast, we can't thank you enough for having this opportunity to be here. You have been the most wonderful people, and thank you for very, very much for hosting us. Absolutely. We Seriously. look forward to it having you pleasure. back. Yeah. Anytime. I would Good love times. to come back. I think we got to do the dad episode. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, but we are I'm all in. sitting on the on the recliners. Yeah. <laughs> just let them go to town. And it should be just Dan and the dads. Yep. That's what Dan I think. and the dads. Da- Dan and the dads. Sounds like there a great it Father's Day episode. <laughs> Father's there Day episode. Yes. Kevin again with his ideas. I know. I know. See, we got to bring this kid on full time. Love Perfect. It. Well, guys, we we would we can't thank you enough for for coming out here, Dean Mallory. You guys. As well, I mean, our pleasure. It, yeah, I'm sure the the ugly sweater party is going to go off without a hitch, and it's going to be an amazing event. And yes, and, and again, it's something that honestly is it's very close to our hearts, and we can't thank any all of you guys enough if you come, and it's going to be a great time too. So, and and um, I don't doubt that for and a second. Yeah. Go to hopheads, hopheadsgear.com, and you can see t-shirts you have the link to buy tickets to the event right there as well everything that you need you can click to their facebook page twitter page and their future instagram page will be up on there and we should remind people that that's hop heads h-e-d-z thank you i was gonna say thank you 
Well, that uh, unfortunately does bring us to the end of another episode of Beer Busters Podcast. And you will find on a street sign in New York a quote that reads, Beer will change the world. I don't know how, but it will. And it starts with the Ugly Sweater Party. December 12th at the Batdorf. Here, here. Indeed. <laughs> guys, again, thank you so much for coming out here. Dean, Mallory, thank you for being here as well. Thank, thank you, you guys for having us. Yeah, it's, pleasure. it's been an absolute blast. As always, I am Dan Baker, joined by my co-host and brewologist... Steph Hefner. And, of course, our from Entertainer. Wayne Baker. Until next time, my friends, we bid you the fondest of adieus. T-shirts, beer, and metal. <laughs> <laughs>